Hello. Today I'm looking at travelling stops. This is maybe not the most glamorous subject. I know I've covered in videos before, but it is one of the most common questions that I get, and typically the questions are about how to create specific types of travelling stop. So in response to that, today I'm going to be adding trailing stops to the common toolbox. If you haven't already seen the common toolbox, then I'll add a link in the description so you can see those videos. I won't be describing the code that's already in the toolbox, so you should see those videos for that code, but I will be showing all of the code for the trailing stops in this video. What I'm going to write today will be a base class and then three individual child classes that create different types of trailing stops and these can be used in future to expand into more specific types of trailing stop. The three types of trailing stop that I'll be showing today will be a simple fixed trailing stop where you just set a gap between the price and the trailing stop, a trailing stop based on some kind of indicator, and I'll be using a Donchian indicator today, and then a trailing stop that's much more flexible where you can actually set the gap independently on each trade. If you want to download the code from today's video, then I'll put notes in the description on how you can get the code from our Discord channel. So now let's get into the editor and start writing some code. So here in the editor, I'm using the MetaTrader 5 editor, but the code that I'm writing will be for both MetaTrader 4 and 5. There will be some conditional compiles, uh, but you'll see those as we go through. Now, before I go any further, I'm working on trailing stops, and I will mention that if you have MetaTrader 5, and I have it expanded here under Include Expert, there is a folder called Trailing. This folder has a number of files that include classes that demonstrate how you can apply trailing stops in different ways. The trailing stops I'm going to write today are using a different technique to this. So I won't be using any of these, but I thought I would mention them in case you want to look at these for reference purposes. I will be using the common toolbox to write these trailing stops. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Common Toolbox, I have released two earlier videos on this where I'm gradually building up a library of include files to allow me to write code that just works between MetaTrader 4 and 5 without having to embed differences inside each of the files. Uh, it does mean that the Common Toolbox itself has a number of differences or a number of sections like this where I'm compiling specifically for MetaTrader 4 or 5. But the use of the Common Toolbox means that I can embed these differences here in the include files. I will need to make changes to some of the files that I've already created and I won't be going back over how these files work. I'll only talk about the changes that I'm making today. So if you haven't already seen the earlier videos on Common Toolbox, you may want to go and see those and there are links in the description to those videos. I'm going to start with the position info custom file. So this is kind of a base file that wraps up position info. There is a C position info already in MetaTrader 5, and I'm bringing that in here with this statement. In MetaTrader 4, I've created a C position info class, which is empty, and then position info custom is building out the rest of the class so that I have a common class to use between MetaTrader 4 and 5. The first thing I'm going to change in here, MetaTrader 4 doesn't have positions. It only has orders, and MetaTrader 5 has introduced positions and I want to use the enums for position types in MetaTrader 4. So I'm just going to create an enum here that's only inside MetaTrader 4 that will give me those position enums. So using the if def statement for MQL4, I've just declared an enum called enum position type, and I'm declaring the position type buy and sell, and I'm just equating those to the order type buy and sell for MetaTrader 4. The next change, for MetaTrader 4 so far, I've only created this count function, which counts the number of trades matching a particular symbol and magic number. But I also want now to create two more functions. So I'm creating this total function inside the class. Uh, MetaTrader 5 uses a function called positions total to get the total number of positions that you have open. In MetaTrader 4, there is an orders total. Now I don't want to write different code, so I'm creating a total function inside the position info that will give me positions total for MetaTrader 5, or it will give me orders total for MetaTrader 4. And I've also created a select ticket function, which will emulate the MetaTrader 5 position select ticket, and in MetaTrader 4 it will wrap around the order select function. 
Now these two functions are going to be available in both MetaTrader 4 and 5, but now there are some additional functions that I want to create only for MetaTrader 4, and that's because they already exist inside the position info or the C position info class in MetaTrader 5. So in MetaTrader 5, the position info already has a price open, stop loss, and take profit and position type function. I need to use those for today's work, so I'm going to create them in MetaTrader 4. And they're very simple functions. They simply return order open price, order stop loss, order take profit, or order type. So I'm really just wrapping these order functions up and putting them inside the position info class. And those are all the changes I need inside the position info custom. These functions will actually go inside the specific position info files for MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. So if I go to position info custom underscore MQL4, and you can see at the bottom of this file, I'm including those two specific files from the position info custom file. I'm including position info custom MQL4 or MQL5. So if I go to the MQL4 where I'll be writing the additional functions. Now the first thing I'm going to do in here is not important or essential for what I'm doing today, but I have had some comments that this file does not compile. Now I'll mention the MQH files don't actually compile, but you can run the compiler across them and it will run a syntax check. But this MQL4 file doesn't pass the syntax check simply because it's using things inside this existing function that are defined in the position info custom. So if you compile position info custom, that works. Uh, it won't work at the moment until I create these total and select ticket functions. But if you simply tried to run the compiler on position info custom MQL4, you get errors. I can fix that easily just by including the position info custom file here. And now if I tried to run the compiler on the MQL4 file, it will bring in the position info custom and that will create the things that are missing from this already. Uh, you don't need to worry about a circular loop in that this is including position info custom and then position info custom includes the MQL4 version. MetaTrader will only include an include file once and that will be included the first time it finds a reference to it. So now I'll just add the two additional functions that I needed here. So the first is the total function, and in the case of MetaTrader 4, that simply returns orders total. And the next is select ticket, which in MetaTrader 4 calls the order select. Now the argument to this is an I, which is the index. So order select I, select by position, mode trades. So that will select the I th order from the list of trades in MetaTrader 4. And if that's successful, so I've got an if statement wrapped around if order select, then it returns the ticket number from the current order. And if it's not successful, then it will return zero. And this will emulate the results of position select ticket in MetaTrader 5, which returns a zero if it can't select the positioned ticket and returns otherwise the ticket number. And just in case you're not used to the way this common toolbox works, you'll see that this class name is the actual class name from position info custom. All I've really done with these include files is to take some functions that are already declared here and write them differently for MetaTrader 4 or 5. And rather than wrap the if def around them and embed them inside this one file, I've created two separate files. And that way inside this MQL4 file, I have functions that are specific to MetaTrader 4. And inside the MQL5 file, I have the same functions, but they're written for MetaTrader 5. And now the position info custom underscore MQL5. I'll add the same include statement. And now I add the two additional functions. So the total function for MetaTrader 5 returns positions total, where in MetaTrader 4 we returned orders total. And the select ticket as I mentioned, uses position get ticket, still passing the index number, and I'm converting that to an int or I'm casting it to an int here. 
So a position get ticket will already return a zero if this fails, otherwise it will return the ticket number. And it will do the same thing as order select in that the information on that position is now loaded into memory, ready for use by the position functions. So if I just go back to position info custom, I can hit the compile button and that will do a syntax check on position info custom for me. Let's come back with no errors. Now the other change I need to make to the existing classes, MetaTrader 5 already has a trade class which we include. So if I open trade custom, I'm already including trade slash trade.mqh which is the MetaTrader 5 version. I've created the MetaTrader 4 version of that but only with as much as I've needed so far. So I'm only doing what I need and I need to expand that. So there is a file trade underscore mql4.mqh and I'm just going to make some modifications to that. So here's the trade underscore mql4.mqh file. And because I've only been creating functions as I need them, I now need one additional function, which is position modify. So I already have position open declared in this. I need position modify to emulate the position modify function that exists in the MetaTrader 5 trade class. Uh, and the arguments to that, just ticket, stop loss, and take profit, because those are the same arguments that MetaTrader 5 takes for the position modify function. And then I just need to create that function, position modify. I'm going to place it here before the clear structures function. So arguments, ticket number, stop loss, and take profit. And I'm simply returning order modify, which is a MetaTrader 4 function. And I'm passing in the ticket number, the open price. Now you can't modify an open price, and I don't know what that is, so I'm just passing a zero in here. And then the modified stop loss and modified take profit, and a zero also for expiry. Now I'm only going to be using this on open trades, not on stop and limit orders. If I were applying this to stop and limit orders, I would need to set these values. But for open trades, there is no changing of the open price or the expiry, so I don't need to worry about those two arguments. And order modify returns a boolean, so I've wrapped all of that in a return statement, and that way the position modify returns the result of the order modify function. So that's the end of the changes I need to make to the common toolbox. Next, I'm going to be creating the trailing stop classes. So now I'll actually create the trailing stop classes. I'm going to create a new folder inside the common toolbox just called trailing stop. And now I'm just going to create a trailing stop base file to begin with. So here's the trailing stop base file that I've created. I've just tied it up a little bit. So simple comments, property statements, and then I've included the trade custom class and I've use the relative reference dot dot slash trade. So if you look at the location here in the navigator, trailing stop base is inside trailing stop. So I go up a level and then back down into the trade folder. And that's where I can find trade custom. Uh, I could have used the absolute path here and placed orchard common toolbox. Uh, but this way, if I move the common toolbox around, all of these files are still in the same relative position. So I've used the dot dot slash trade here. And now the trailing stop base is going to contain the standard functions for implementing trailing stops. And then I'm going to create three different methods of applying a trailing stop that will inherit from that and use different approaches to a trailing stop. So just to begin the class, simple class statement, C trailing stop base, class name. Uh, I have nothing in private, under protected, I have a trade object that's of type C trade custom and that comes from this trade custom.mqh file and that's not a pointer I'm just declaring it as a variable because it doesn't really have any state so this will simply be destroyed when this class terminates and the same for the C position info custom and I've created a variable called position info and then there are two other basic pieces of information I want I want to know the symbol that I'm going to be applying the trailing stops to and the magic number And then I have constructors. So there's the default constructor, which has no arguments. Uh, and I'm simply going to place some default values into that when I write the function. 
and then the trailing stop base constructed that takes a symbol and a magic number. And this is the one that I would expect to use most of the time where it fills in these variables then. And then the destructor, but when we get to that you'll see there's nothing in the destructor. And now I have two basic functions for the trailing stop. There's a simple apply function and that will take a trailing stop size. So this will be a size in whatever currency is being applied and that simply then calculates where the trailing stop prices should be. And then a second function also called apply, so I'm overloading this, that actually takes the prices for the buy and the sell trailing stop points. And then just to finish off the class, I have some properties. There's a get and set of symbol and get and set for magic number. So that allows me to modify these while the class is running after I've called the constructor. Uh, the gets simply return the appropriate M symbol or M magic and the sets will simply set those member variables. Now the constructor and destructor. So the default constructor I said takes no arguments and then all I'm doing is calling the other constructor, the C trailing stop base, passing in the symbol from the current chart and zero is the magic number. And in the constructor that takes arguments, all I'm doing is calling the set symbol and set magic, passing the symbol and magic number from the function call. And then as I said, destructor, there's nothing in here. Now there are two apply functions, one that takes the size of the trailing stop and the one that takes the buy and sell trailing stop prices. I'm going to write the one that takes the size of the trailing stop first because that will then call the second function. Now the first thing I'm calculating here is the close price for buy and sell trades. And that's using symbol info double, passing the current symbol for the symbol that has been passed into this class and getting the bid or the ask price. So the symbol bid is the closing price for a buy and ask is the closing price for a sell. Then I'm getting the number of digits. I'm not using the digits function because that only returns number of digits for the current chart symbol. And because this has been written to allow you to pass in a symbol name, that may not be the current chart. So I'm instead using symbol info integer which is another function that returns for that symbol the number of digits by using the symbol underscore digits function. Uh, and I'm casting that to an int. So even though this is symbol info integer, the value returned is actually a long. So I want that to be an integer. So I'm just casting it to an int in this digits. And then the buy and sell price levels. Buy close minus the trailing stop gives me the buy trailing stop price and sell close plus the trailing stop gives me the sell trailing stop price. And I'm wrapping both of those in normalized double with the digits and that's why I calculated the number of digits for this particular symbol. And then I'm calling the second apply function passing that buy and sell trailing stop levels. And now that second apply function, we just create some space here. Apply, passing in the buy and the sell. I've called them buy and sell level here, but this is the price where I'm going to be setting that trailing stop. This is going to be using order modify or position modify, and there is no check on failure of that modification. If you can't change the trailing stop value in a particular order, there's nothing really to do about it except to come back and try again next time. Uh, so I'm simply ignoring any failures there. First thing I want to do is get a count of the total number of orders to process, and that's using position info.total. And remember, we've modified the position info custom class so that this works for both MetaTrader 4 and 5. So that's going to give me the total number of trades, or in the case of MetaTrader 4 orders, that I need to loop through. And that's why I've made that change so I can have this common piece of code. 
and then I'm counting backwards for int i equals count minus 1, while i is greater than or equal to 0, i minus minus. It's just my habit to count backwards. Uh, it's not necessary if all you're doing is modifying trades. If you are closing trades, then you should always be counting backwards. But I just generally count backwards because it's normal practice for me. Then I'm getting a ticket number using position info dot select ticket. This is the, another new function that we created. And the MetaTrader 5, you can use position select ticket. Um, but I've wrapped that up into a new function that's part of this position info object, which is of type C position info custom. And so that works for both MetaTrader 4 and 5. It takes an index number and returns the ticket number, which will be zero if this failed. And here is my test. If ticket is equal to zero, continue. So I'm simply looping around to the next position. I only want to apply trailing stop if it's better than the existing stop loss price on an order or trade. So that's a standard trailing stop function. So I have two different conditions. If position info dot position type is position type buy, then and I have this separate from the position type sell simply because things are in the reverse order. So if I'm buying and the price open, position info dot price open function is less than buy level or is less than the price where I want to set the buy trailing stop. So that means that my trailing stop is already better than the opening price because another standard feature of trailing stops is that they are generally not applied until they are already at least at break even. So I'm testing against the opening price for the trade to see if my trailing stop is already better than that. And if it's improved from the current price, so if the, again, position info dot stop loss. So if the existing stop loss is zero, then there has been no trailing stop applied and no stop loss created already. So if that's zero or the position info dot stop loss is less than my new buy level, my new trailing stop. So if my new trailing stop price is better than the existing stop loss, then I want to apply the new trailing stop. I simply call trade.positionModify, passing the ticket, the new trailing stop price, and the existing take profit price in case there is one. So from position info dot take profit. And that will call the position modify function that you've seen written for MetaTrader 4 that we've just done recently, and the existing position modify function for MetaTrader 5 which both take now ticket, trailing stop, or both now take ticket, stop loss price, and take profit price. And then exactly the same for the sell position, but it uh, looks like my alignment's gone out a little bit here. Let me just... And here is the same thing. Position type equals position type sell. I just have to reverse some of the signs. If the price open, or the open price for the trade is greater than the sell price, or if the open price for the trade is greater than the sell stop loss price. Same condition again here, if stop loss is equal to zero or the stop loss is greater than the new sell level, then I just call position modify, ticket, sell level in this case for the stop loss and the existing take profit if there is one. And that completes the trailing stop base class. So now I'm going to implement three different methods of applying trailing stops and they will all inherit from this trailing stop base. Let me just compile this first. It's only going to be doing a syntax check but just to make sure that this will pass the syntax check and no errors there. So the first time I'm going to create I'm calling it trailing stop fixed and this is the case where you apply a fixed number of points as the trailing stop for all trades. So my class is going to be called C trailing stop fixed and I've already created the beginnings of the file here and it inherits from C trailing stop base. So colon public inheritance C trailing stop base. I have nothing in private, but I do have a protected variable. Now the protected variables from trailing stop base being the, let me scroll up here, symbol and magic number are also available in trailing stop fixed because I'm inheriting from that. So all I need to declare here is the additional information I want to store and that's the size of that fixed trailing amount. So the constructors here, I still have a default constructor and now I have a 
constructor that takes the symbol, the magic number, and additionally the size of that fixed trail amount. And then a destructor again, which still has nothing in there. I have an apply function here, and this has no arguments. Remember the functions from trailing stop base either took the size of the trailing stop or the prices. This one, because I'm setting up the class with a fixed size of trailing stop, I don't need to pass an argument, so I'm creating a new function here, apply with no arguments. And then properties, I've already got the properties from the base class, but now I need to add two properties for the trailing amount so that I can return that or set it again if I need to. So constructors and destructors, the default constructor, same as before. I'm calling the second constructor, passing the symbol, zero for the magic number and zero for the trailing stop. So I don't recommend using this because the zero trailing stop is going to cause errors in your application, but I'm just passing it in there. Here is my second constructor, symbol, magic number, and the fixed trail. I'm calling the parent constructor, passing the symbol and the magic number, so that takes care of handling those with this colon parent class name symbol magic and then just as before set trail with the fixed trail amount so that sets up this class now to apply that trailing stop and then the destructor has nothing in there and now all I have to do to make this class work is to write this apply function and that is very simple in this case because I already have an apply function that takes a trailing stop amount. All I have to do is call that, calling C trailing stop base. So I'm calling the base class, colon, colon, and the apply method from that base class and passing in the size of my trailing stop amount. So that's all I have to do to create a fixed trailing stop class. Syntax check on that with the compile and that's fine. So the next type of trailing stop is something a little different, and this is where I'm going to be applying a trailing stop amount that's based on some kind of calculation at each point rather than a fixed amount. Uh, and I'm using Donchian for this. So I'm calling my class C trailing stop Donchian, still public inheritance from C trailing stop base. Nothing in private. I have two variables that I need to add now. So apart from the symbol and magic number, I've got number of bars for the Donchian calculation and the time frame for the Donchian calculation. Now, typically these would be, or typically the time frame would come from your current chart, but I'm allowing you to set that. So these are the two values I need to calculate a Donchian value for a trailing stop. So I've just written the rest of the declaration of the class here. So C trailing stop Donchian, the default constructor I still have. I then have the specific constructor, still takes a symbol and magic number, and then it needs to take bars, which will be placed in this M bars, and the time frame for the Donchian calculation. And still a destructor, but there'll still be nothing there. The apply function also here, but with no arguments, because once you've filled in these values, this class can calculate the trailing stop each time. And then I have the simple properties for the get and set for bars and the time frame. The constructor and destructor very similar to the trailing stop fixed. In this case, the default constructor, I'm just calling the specific constructor here, symbol, magic number, I'm defaulting the number of bars to 10 and the period to period current from the current chart. In case you do call this specific constructor, I'm taking the symbol, magic number, number of bars and the time frame. I'm still calling the trailing stop base for the symbol and magic to store those. And then I'm just using the set functions on bars and time frame there. And still nothing in the destructor. And then just like for fixed, the only thing I need to write is the apply function. So if you're not familiar with Donchian, it is simply the highest high and the lowest low of previous number of bars. So the buy stop loss is going to be at the low of the Donchian and the sell stop loss is going to be at the high. 
And to calculate that, then all I need to do is use I lowest on the symbol, the time frame, mode low, which means that I'm looking at the low price for the number of bars beginning at bar number one. So the bar that's just closed. So I get the I lowest and that gives me the bar number that has the lowest low. And then I actually want to get the value of that low. So I just use the I low function again with the symbol, the time frame, and passing in that bar number. So that gives me the lowest low price from the previous bars. And the sell stop loss is the high. It's exactly the same. I'm using the I high and using I highest to find the bar number. And then because I've got two prices here instead of just a value, so with trailing stop fixed, I pass the value to the apply just with a single argument. Now I'm calling the other apply function where I'm passing the buy and the sell prices. And I'm calling C trailing stop base colon colon apply and passing those two. And that finishes the trailing stop Donchian. And you can substitute here any other type of inbuilt indicator or even custom indicator that you like that's going to give you a buy and a sell trailing stop value. So just as before, I'll hit the compile button to make sure I don't have any syntax errors, and that's right. Now, although the trailing stop dungeon is compiled, I've just realized I need to make a change here. I actually should begin counting from bar number zero for bars plus one. And that's just because on bar number zero, the price may already be at a point where the high or low from bars beginning at bar number one is an invalid stop loss price. So I'm counting bar number zero as well, and including M bars plus one. So that'll include zero plus the five, 10, whatever bars before that. So now I have one more class, and this one's a little more complex. So this one I'm calling trailing stop flex. And the purpose here is that you can calculate a specific trailing stop for each order. So this might be something based on the specific price or the current stop loss or take profit of that order. So I've got the beginnings of it here already, include trailing stop base. And here it already becomes a little bit more complex than the others. Type def double asterisk TS stop loss price. So what I'm declaring is a type, which I'm calling T stop loss price, which is a pointer to a function that returns a double, and that function takes no arguments. So this will allow me to pass a function into this class, and then this class will in turn call that function to get the stop loss price. Now that will be a little clearer when I get to writing the example and show you how to use this. So class declaration though is the same, C trailing stop flex, public inheritance from C trailing stop base, nothing in private. In protected, I now have one variable, which is type T stop loss price, that's this. And I'm just calling my variable MSL function. So by stop loss function. The rest of the class looks much like the others, a default constructor, constructor with arguments taking the symbol the magic and in this case the functions being passed into it t stop loss price and a destructor which still has nothing and a single apply function there is no get and set for the function pointer there's no point in really doing that so I haven't created get and set functions there if you really want to switch functions while your expert is running then simply destroy the object of the C trailing stop flex that you've created and create a new one. The constructors and destructors will look very similar again. The default constructor, I'm just calling the constructor with arguments, chart symbol, zero for the magic number and null for the function. So you really shouldn't use this. I've put it there just to make sure that everything compiles. And here is the specific constructor, symbol, magic number, T stop loss price, SL function. I call the base class first to fill in the symbol and magic number. And then all I'm doing is assigning that SL function value to MSL function. So it looks very much like the others and still nothing in the destructor. 
Now in this case I can't simply call the apply function from the parent class. Uh, let me just go back to the trailing stop base for a moment. The apply functions here all expect to have a single set of values for the buy and the sell price and then loop through all of the trades. In the flex class, I'm actually allowing you to set a different trailing stop value for each trade. Therefore, I need to call this function to get that price at each trade. So I'm actually going to be duplicating the entire loop here. I'll just write the entire function then step through it. So I've written the entire function here because largely it's the same as the loop we had before. I start with a count, which is just position info.total. That's the same. But I'm then declaring a double SL price. That's where I'm just going to be placing the price that comes back from that function that's passed in. The same loop counting backwards as before. I still get the ticket number with position info.select ticket. And I'm still just continuing on to the next iteration of the loop if ticket number comes back as zero. Now I'm making an assumption here that when I call the function to get that price, that is the price where you want to set the stop loss. So I'm not going to be comparing this to the open price for the trade. That means that this trailing stop can be used to set a stop loss price that would actually be in loss if you want to. And if you return a zero, then that means it won't be applied. So I capture the stop loss price simply by SL price equals MSL function bracket bracket. So this function, remember, takes no arguments the way it was declared as that. Let me scroll back up here. It's declared as taking no arguments. So I don't need to pass anything to it. This function is going to assume that the current order or position has already been loaded into memory. And therefore, when I write that function, which I'll do in the example expert, it expects to receive no arguments and it will work on the current order and return a double, which is the stop loss price. So if stop loss price is greater than zero, I'm simply saying if you return a zero from this, it means you don't want to set a stop loss on that trade. So if you return a value that's greater than zero, then these tests position info dot type equals position type buy. Then I'm saying if the stop loss currently is zero or stop loss is less than the new price that's supplied. So this is the same test I had before. I'm only going to apply the trailing stop if it's better than the existing stop loss price. Then I just call position modify ticket stop loss price and the existing take profit, just the same as before. And then for the position type sell, it's simply the reverse, greater than the stop loss price. And I'm applying the stop loss price here. So the only real difference here is that I've inserted this line where I'm getting the stop loss price from your custom function and I've taken out any logic to compare that to the original opening price for the trade. So the operation of this function might become a little clearer when I write the expert advisor to use this. But this does allow you to have a custom function that will calculate that price differently for each trade. Let me just hit the compile on that, make sure I don't have a syntax error here. That's right. So now I've created three different trailing stop methods. Uh, the fixed price or the fixed amount, uh, Donchian based on a calculation on the Donchian channel, and Flex, which lets you set a different stop loss price for each trade. So all that's left is to create some expert advisors that actually implement that. Now, rather than take you through the creation of these trailing stop examples, I've already written the EAs for these. They are very basic EAs. They will simply place a trade. Uh, they'll begin with a buy. And as soon as that buy closes, they will then open a sell. When that sell closes, they will open a buy. So no specific logic to these, uh, but they are good for demonstrating the trailing stops. TS example one that I have here will use the fixed trailing stop. So I'm beginning with my next type order type buy. I'm going to be setting a default take profit stop loss on all the trades of 0 0.005. Now, because I've coded this as 0 0.005, I'm just going to make sure when I run the examples that I use this against symbols that, are, that have five digit pricing. Uh, lots 0 0.01 and just a magic number of one, two, three here. Trailing stop variable. I'm setting my trailing stop at 0 0.002. So 
a bit smaller than the take profit stop loss. All I need to do then, I'm declaring a variable of type C trailing stop fixed. It's a pointer and I'm calling the variable trailing stop. This is MetaTrader 5, so I'm going to be using the trade object. So I'm doing trade.setExpertMagic number and filling in the magic to begin with. And trailing stop then, this is equal to a new C trailing stop fixed, chart symbol, magic number, and the trail amount, which is this 0 0.0020. So that sets up my trailing stop. I really should have included here a delete. clean up after myself and then in on tick uh, all of this is simply placing trades if I don't already have a trade open so I'm just testing positions total equal to zero it means I don't have any trades open uh, and depending on the next type if it's a buy I'm opening a buy and then setting to a sell so that's how I'm alternating between the buy and sell I'm opening them all with the take profit and stop loss already built in and then returning if I don't have a position open. So I open up a new position, then I return. But if I come in here and there is a position open, then I'm going to be simply calling trailing stop dot apply. And that's my fixed trailing stop. We'll go on and talk about example two. This is using the Donchian. So all this is the same. I'm still setting up a trailing stop with a, or I'm still setting up an order with a take profit stop loss of 0 0.005. I'm declaring my Donchian bars to five. I'm going to be using the current chart time frame. So here my trailing stop is new C, is new C trailing stop Donchian, symbol magic number Donchian bars from here, and then current chart period. Again, I forgot to delete. All of this logic is the same, still opens up a trade if I don't have one open, and then just trailing stop.apply. So the same syntax, even the same statements, but just because I have a different object here, it's going to be applying a Donchian trailing stop. Example three is then a little different. So I'm including trailing stop flex here. I still have take profit stop loss, lots magic number, all of that's the same. Trailing stop flex, asterisk trailing stop. So that's where I declare the variable. Still setting up the magic number on trade. New C trailing stop flex symbol magic. And here, stop loss price. This is actually the name of a function inside this file. And then return it succeeded. And I still forgot to delete. There we go. On tick, all of this is the same. Still opening an order depending on whether I have one open or not. And then I'm still just calling trailing stop dot apply. So all of that's the same. But now here I have a function called stop loss price. It returns a double, has no arguments. Here, stop loss price, that's the name of that function. Inside the stop loss price function, I'm keeping this simple. I'm calculating the difference between the current take profit and the current price and then I'm calculating a new stop loss value which is the current price minus that difference so what this will effectively do because I know I'm setting a take profit in this expert advisor as the price comes closer to that take profit it will simply set the stop loss to be the same distance away that the take profit is and that's how I'm doing a calculation that's based on this order only and then I just return that stop loss value. So what I'm calculating here is not terribly important. What I'm demonstrating is that I can perform a calculation and calculate a different stop loss value for each trade that I have open. And all this will do is effectively sandwich the current price, price current, in between a stop loss and the fixed take profit. So take profit won't move, but stop loss will get closer as the price continues to move towards that take profit. So all I needed to do for this is create a function, pass the name of that function in here, and now the trailing stop flex class has that value and can call that function 
to get the trailing stop price at each iteration. Let me compile these three. So now I'll actually go to MetaTrader 5 and I'll run these just to show that they're working. All right, I've opened up the strategy tester already. It's placed the one buy trade. You can see there's a take profit here and a stop loss here at 500 each. So I'll just let that run until it actually does something in terms of the stop loss. So this is the fixed stop loss or the fixed trailing stop and you've seen that this stop loss has appeared and it's gradually creeping up as new highs are made. So it's following the price at that gap of 0 0.002. So I have example number two running. This is using the Donchian trailing stop and I've actually had to modify the initial take profit and stop loss here because the price is hitting those too quickly and you don't get a chance to see the trailing stop coming in. So they're off the screen because I've doubled the size of the take profit and stop loss. All right, I've just paused that. This is the first time where the five bars before the current bar all have a low above the initial entry price. So you can see that the trailing stop has entered here at the low of this fifth bar, which is the lowest of these. Let's let that run for a little bit. Then at the next point, we can see the price for the stop loss has moved from the low here up to this low, which is now the lowest of the previous five bars. And now finally, I have the flexible where I'm actually going to be moving the stop loss up so that the current price is midway between the take profit and the stop loss. Now you can see here from opening the buy trade, I've gone into negative immediately and the stop loss hasn't moved. So it's not going to move until I come up with a stop loss price that's better than the existing stop loss. And that should happen as soon as the price goes above this buy point because then it will be closer to the take profit and so the stop loss will begin to accelerate up. Now you can see it's moved a little already and as this price continues to move towards the take profit, the stop loss will close on that. And so each time the price makes new highs closer to the take profit, the stop loss is increasing. And as I mentioned, this doesn't care about that stop loss being better or worse than the entry point because that's up to you inside the function that you pass into the class. And those are my three trailing stop methods. Uh, one that takes a fixed amount, the other that uses a calculation but then applies that same value to the trailing stop on all trades and the other that actually allows you to calculate a different trailing stop amount on each trade if you like. If you found this useful, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more of our videos, then click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when we do release a new video. Thank you for watching.